Pablo Escobar has been labeled the king of cocaine, as well as the undisputed boss of Colombia's Medellin cartel. When Pablo Escobar died, he was estimated to be worth $30 billion, which would be worth $64 billion today. Pablo Escobar's narcotics network controlled the transportation of cocaine into the United States. With money flowing from his ears, Escobar led a lavish lifestyle, splurging on homes, cars, yachts, parties, and women. He even planned to pay off Colombia's $10 billion debt in the 1980s, believe it or not. Escobar led a life that everyone admired. He adored his properties and made significant investments in real estate. He bought other luxury residences, safe houses and warehouses, but his Hacienda Naples was the most famous. The sprawling estate encompassed 7,000 acres of land and had a Spanish colonial mansion as well as three private zoos filled with exotic animals and birds. There was also a sculpture park, a private airfield, a bull ring, and a kart racing track on the property. The property also included 27 lakes, the world's largest motorbike track, two helipads, and a kilometer-long airstrip. It even had its own petrol station, mechanics, and paint shop, as well as a large workforce. The Hacienda was an ordinary Playboy house that the Colombian government took following Escobar's death and assessed at only $2.2 million. The actual worth was significantly higher, and Escobar was said to have paid roughly $63 million for the Hacienda. Escobar spent a lot of money on exotic pets, including elephants, tigers, rare birds, and giraffes, but his favorite was his four hippopotamuses. When the government took over the land, most of the animals were relocated to sanctuaries. However, the hippos escaped and now reside in swamps near the Hacienda. They subsequently continue to proliferate at an astonishing rate, and there are now approximately 100 hippos in the neighborhood. Escobar also purchased a magnificent Caribbean vacation on Isla Grande the largest of the 27 cluster islands that comprise the Islas del Rosario. 22 miles from Cartagena, the opulent home was similar to a drug-fueled Zenadu, which is now in ruins and being reclaimed by nature. The massive complex included a home, waterfront apartments, a palm court centered around a massive swimming pool, and a helicopter landing pad. The main mansion had over 300 rooms for guests and partygoers, and Escobar is believed to have gone to great lengths to make it look as magnificent as possible, right down to gold showerheads in the baths. Escobar's playground was reminiscent of a strip from Miami's South Beach in the 1980s. Think again if you think Pablo Escobar didn't wish to live in the United States. He went on to buy a pastel pink waterfront mansion on 5860 North Bay Road in Miami Beach, Florida. Escobar paid $765,500 to the property, which comprised a four-bedroom home with a swimming pool built in 1948 and later seized by the U.S. government. When Christian de Birdwara, owner of the Chicken Kitchen fast food restaurant, bought the property for $11 million, he instructed a demolition squad to search for anything associated with Pablo Escobar. The crew discovered other strange holes in the walls that were most likely used to hold money, including a stolen safe constructed into the home's marble flooring. Under the main staircase, safes were also uncovered. Escobar appeared to have hidden his money in every nook and corner of his houses. The most contentious of Escobar's properties was the La Catedral, which was, believe it or not, a prison he had built for himself. The USDEAs apparently wanted Escobar deported to the U.S., but the Colombians made a bargain after Escobar, offered to remain under house arrest in a prison he built himself, guarded by his own bodyguards, who would double as prison guards. It sounds strange and humorous, even if it is a mockery of justice, yet no one wanted to face Escobar. As a result, the opulent La Cathedral was born. There was a nightclub, a sauna, a waterfall, and a soccer field, as well as telephones, computers, and fax machines. However, after Escobar tortured two cartel members at La Cathedral, Colombian authorities opted to transfer him to a less hospitable prison. In July 1992, Escobar escaped before they could come for him. Escobar, like anyone with a lot of money to spend, enjoyed collecting cars, but not just any automobile. He collected collector's items such as his 1972 Mercedes S 600 Pullman, a 3-liter V8 powered limo that was a style statement for all heads of state back then. Escobar had enormous political clout and once had the Colombian government wrapped around his fingers, so much so that he thought himself the unofficial president of Colombia which is why the automobile. The Merc was destroyed during a Cali cartel bombing on his Medellin home in 1988, but he had the charred shell exhibited in front of his estate, 
Hacienda Naples, as a show of defiance to his adversaries. Escobar even bought a 1928 Cadillac V8 Town sedan, a typical Al Capone type mobster's automobile. He was so weird that he wanted the car to look just like something A. L. Capone would have possessed, which was a bullet riddled car. Escobar also possessed a 1978 Cinca 1000, a Porsche 935 V, a 1964 Porsche 356, a 1978 Renault, and his most prized possession, a 1974 Porsche 911 RSR. The car had pedigree paperwork and was one of only 15 in existence. In reality, Emerson Fittipaldi drove this car in the inaugural International Race of Champions. Fittipaldi broke the fuel tank, but it was rebuilt and sold to Pablo Escobar for $875,000 in 2012. Escobar owned 40 costly cars, several of which were destroyed in the Cali attack on his Medellin house where the majority of his family resided. If there was one thing Escobar enjoyed, it was holding parties, and he hosted a number of them at his Hacienda Naples, many of which were themed. He apparently had a passion for themed events, and on New Year's Eve, he would organize massive fireworks displays that the entire village would watch. He was well known for arranging lavish birthday and anniversary parties. He would conduct raffles among his guests at anniversary parties, with the winners being significant works of art by renowned worldwide artists. The majority of these gatherings were held at his property. If Pablo Escobar had one quirk, it was that he was incredibly quirky. When it came to personal hygiene, he insisted on taking a three-hour shower, brushing his teeth for four to five minutes, and who knows, he may have even used a gold-handled toothbrush, though reports suggest he used a child's brush, which is strange. Unlike other billionaires who spend hundreds of dollars on hairstyle, Escobar always cut his own hair or had his wife do it. His hacienda's decor was nothing short of kingly, and he made sure it was always the best, right down to hand-embroidered tablecloths imported from Venice. They were so special and one of a kind that it took four years to make them once they were ordered. Escobar would even book a private plane to Bogota to have his flowers delivered, which he would then use to decorate the penthouse of his 1,700-square-meter Monaco, building in Medellin. He also enjoyed having hundreds of employees around him since he wanted his estates to be kept immaculate, and because they were so huge, maintenance required a large crew. It wasn't only the personnel. Escobar insisted on every member of the staff wearing specially tailored clothing. Female maids were expected to take self-makeup and manicure classes to ensure they always appeared well-groomed. While Escobar enjoyed splurging on his lifestyle, he also gave large sums to Medellin's philanthropic institutions. Many saw Escobar's construction of hospitals, schools, churches, and stadiums for the Medellin community as a deception to keep the population on his side. He even funded soccer teams, which increased his popularity among Colombians, who considered him as a modern-day Robin Hood. In 1982, he was elected to an alternate position in the country's Congress, but he was forced to quit after his unlawful activities were revealed. Escobar lived up to his infamous image by assassinating the justice minister who led the campaign against him. Escobar's reign of terror in Colombia came to an end after he was relentlessly pursued by a Colombian task team assisted by the American DEA who provided tracking equipment. Escobar, like a genuine mobster and like Tony Montana of Scarface fame, refused to surrender and preferred to go down shooting on December 2, 1993. The Medellin cartel imploded soon after his death as a result of the government's harsh crackdown. That was Pablo Escobar's opulent lifestyle for you. And with that being said, it's time to end our video. What's your take on Pablo Escobar's luxurious lifestyle? Let us know in the comments. Like this video and make sure to subscribe to the channel for more amazing videos like this. We'll see you in the next video.